Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So the build part of the Sherman is now finished. It's time to move on to the figures. So what I have here is a couple of resin figures. We've got one which is this guy here is a Panzer Art figure. And this one here is a, a Mantis figure. So I'll just show you the there's the, the Panzer Art figures. So obviously I'll be using that. You do get a choice of heads as well. So fantastic looking figures to be honest, really, really nice. And then this is the Mantis Miniatures one. So again, nicely sculpted figure. Got his got his gun here, as you can see. I'll attach that later and have a strap. So we'll just put that somewhere safe before I lose it. So as you can see, I've already assembled them. Bit of clean up, um, bit of obviously black widow super glue just to glue the arms on and the heads in place and get the positions right so next step is I've got a feeling I'm gonna to have to do a bit of seam work on here but I'm gonna give them a coat of primer okay so probably just gonna use a coat of grey primer and then um, we're gonna be painting them in gen 3 AK as I did with the uh, the German figure that I painted in another video series so we'll see how they go um, I'm going to add some more figures to this because there is a, a base as well that I'm I'm going to make uh, and it's going to be populated with a few more but just use these two as an example or, or probably just one of them we'll see how we'll see how it goes I don't want to bore you to death with it but um, yeah so we'll just use these as a bit of an example of painting obviously US World War Two camouflage or oh, camouflage sorry uniform so. Alright, so without further ado, I'll go and get some primer on these guys and then we'll come back and we will start the painting process. So get these two a coat of primer, alright, usual black undercoat and then a white highlight. So just to bring out the details. See if there's any flaws. Got a couple of bits of filling to do on this guy's arms. Joins. There's a little bit of a gap, nothing much. Tiny, tiny little bit of putty will do that just to... Uh, just to sharpen them joins back up. The Panzer Art guy fitted absolutely perfect. He's absolutely bang on. Um, really nice detail, really nice sculpt. Plan is what I'm going to do is got this Gen 3 figure set. So I'm going to give them a go. As you can see, I should have all pretty much all the colours on there. There will be variations for obvious reasons to separate them both. And, uh, you know, as we go along, things will obviously evolve as they normally do. But, yeah, we'll use these as the bases and then, you know, lighten and darken and do the usual shadows and highlights and whatever as we as we go along. So, all right, I'll get the wet palette set up. We'll get some paint down and then we'll, uh, we'll start painting. All right, so what we'll do is I'll start from... From the front, like I say, this is going to be really, really thin coats, transparent, pretty much. Don't want to, um, when working with acrylics, put it on in a big heavy coat. Nice thin coats. Just build it up gradually and you'll get better transitions uh, from light to dark. Push it just won't. You won't get this horrible build up that you get with, with acrylics when they're too thick. Right. If you've got reference as well, if you've got a screen in front of you where you can, you know, Google images just to give yourself an idea of what they look like in real life, that also helps.
the thing as well to try and do is actually try and keep within the lines so if you're painting the jacket paint the jacket you know and so on and so forth so you just just helps with brush control if you need to steady yourself some people you know rest the finger just to steady you know Steady the hand if necessary. Also, also a thing to remember as well with acrylics, they start off bright, but they do fade. They do die down when they dry once the water's evaporated. So bear that in mind as well. It might look very stark to begin with. Give it an hour or so, and it'll all settle. So, okay, I'm going to finish off basing his jacket up. Get a coat on the back, um, then we'll come back, see where we're at, see if we need to adjust it colour-wise, tone, whatever, um, and then we'll go from there. So the first coat's dried off, as you can see. Now, just assessing it, I'm overly, I'm not overly happy with this colour. I think it's a bit a bit much, a bit loud I think. So what I've done is on my palette, which I can't got it shot, I've just put a bit of light rubber on which is kind of a lightish brown colour. I've then just chucked that into the mix. Which then gives us a, um, a bit more of a dulled down colour I suppose if you want to call it that. All I've done is look, I've just give it, give it a rough coat on the back. I'm going to give the uh, Front coat, um, the front of the jacket, a coat now. So, again, thin coats. Just build it up gradually again. And don't be afraid because this sometimes does happen if you know you put a, a base coat down or you know you think yeah that looks nice and then you, you know when it's dried off or you know you come back to it it's like it's not quite what you want so again it's a bit to in and fro in just getting to where you want if you if you paint is is like super thin it doesn't matter it's not going to build up you know not as obviously if it would if it was of a thicker consistency so you can just layer over it just gent gently build it up to you get you know where you want to be you're not going to like lose any detail or you know obscure anything because you've got two thicker coats of paint on so figuring it out as you go super right let that dry off we'll come back we'll start doing some highlighting So base coat's dry, what we're going to do now is just sketch in some highlights. Okay, so I'll just quickly bring the palette back in. So there's a mid-tone, which we've now gone over from the original. I've started to highlight it a little bit on the back. I just wanted to just, let's just, just start sketching as you can see. I mean, it's, it's not really covered. But you can see where I'm going with this, just to sketch in where, where the the light's going to catch, okay? So obviously on the shoulders, and then on, you know, on these creases that are sticking out. So we're just sort of sketching in 
just basic highlights at the minute and then we'll we'll move on once we've sort of got the the map down i suppose you want to call it that so um just going back to the palette what i've done is a good highlight color i suppose or lightning color is a flesh tone so what i've done is just with this rust color a touch of white and a tiny bit of the ochre is just make a bit of a flesh color a peachy color if you want to call it that necessary warm it up with a dab of orange or just kill it a little bit with a, a tight and i mean tiny because blue is very strong but a tiny bit of blue if you want to desaturate it um but basically with these three colors here and probably if you had yellow on the palette you could make every fresh color going i think you know um instead of you know if you if you want to go down the route of mixing your own flesh tones blah de blah they're ideal colors anyway or that or them in them tones you know you can you can do most things with them so like i say this is just going to be mixing into them just to gently highlight it up all right we don't want to go too too much too quick as they say keeping the paint thin but controllable and i'm now going to swap out the brush as well for a bit more of a um move back to my trusty old Windsor and Newton number two series seven nice pointy tip pick out where we want to highlight okay so obviously on these colors can't stress enough as well don't forget that acrylics don't dry the same as you put them on I'll keep saying it and saying it um, because it's just something to bear in mind All right, so because you're sketching in the highlights, what I'll do is just carry on, carry on with this, sketch them in. Uh, we'll come back and then we'll have a, we'll have a look where we're at with that. Where we need to adjust, what we need to go back and touch up. Because again, something I've said before and I'll say it again, it's for me personally. Other people might be different, but I like to just go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, just to just to get where I need to be so I just find it quite therapeutic painting especially painting figures just learning how to do it uh, learning to new techniques things like that so so as you can see I like to now starting to appear as if out of nowhere so what you can do you can just keep working on them till you're comfortable with how you know bright high um, stand out you want them to be all right so all I've been doing is just adding that flesh tone to the base mix just to so just just to make them pop out some more uh, again just doing it on the shoulders so if you you know also a bit of advice because I obviously use an optivizer is think of the scale all right so when it's under the optivizer sometimes it can look a bit rough i think would be a polite way of looking at it um just take your optivizer off and put it at normal eye you know distance okay so where you would you would normally look at it but you've got to think you know this this being a small figure you want to exaggerate the features to make it stand out i think that's sort of the trick uh it's like you know pantomime makeup i suppose or theater makeup if you want to call it that whatever where it's just you know 
where this is going to be on the scene, you're going to be viewing it at what six foot, five foot, four foot, whatever, however far away you are viewing it from. So that's sort of the perspective you need to be looking at. So, but as you can see, the highlights are starting to, you know, now you get a bit of definition between the shadows and the highlights and the, you know, and the clothing in general. So I'm going to carry on just blocking in, I suppose. Okay, so we've got some basic highlights and midtones, as you can see. So we're starting to build it up, we're getting a bit of definition. Just what I've done off camera is just a quick sort of pass with the shadows. Um just to get a a feel for myself really where I want to go with it in the colour. So basically what I've just done is take the base colour and just ha um add a touch of black. Okay. Darken it off just a smidge. Again, you want to build it up. You don't want to get too, too hard too soon. You just want a gentle transition, just to just um, just to put the shadows in. Also, you want to sort of where the pockets are, where his zip is, where the sleeves are separated from the um, from the rest of the jacket. Is is outline them, outline under the collars. What you're doing is adding separation. To the parts okay around the back of his collar so you're doing like a bit of a drop shadow or if you're uh, an armor model a kind of a pin wash i suppose is another way you want to put it just to add separation just to separate stuff also as well rule of thumb excuse me with um where there's a highlight put in a shadow or at least something darker because that's where it pops okay So if you've got the figure standing there, you're doing sort of 12 o'clock, straight down sun, shoulders, obviously the top of the folds, um, top of his back, top of his head eventually, obviously like his elbows where his arms stick out, these parts here, these are going to all be in shadow because obviously they're underneath, but you do want to put a bit of definition, de bit of definition definition in there sorry um again if you if you look at some of the absolute masters of, of figure painting their their lighting is just different level just you know they they're going from all angles and getting getting all sorts of effects which are just yeah mind-blowing to me so i'm just going for basics that's where i'm at that's my skill level just basic paint jobs and just you know push myself with each figure So as you can see, we've laid down the, the basics for the jacket. So what I'm going to do is take it, bear in mind, obviously, like I keep saying about them fading back, I'm going to just now move on to another part of his um, of his uniform. So I'll probably paint the trousers next, and then um, we'll, we'll move on to the flesh tones, and then at the end we'll come back and then just re-highlight, re-shadow, um, you know, paint his insignia, things like that, when we're... Uh, when we're all done so pants next as they say over in the states or trousers if you're in the uk pick out the color same same sort of obviously same sort of um procedure if we've painted the jacket but obviously we're going for you know a lighter green i think they were a very faded green i'll have a look do my reference searches so yeah thanks for watching this one on the jacket and uh, so we'll just follow up with a, with his trousers it's time to now move on to the flesh parts so as you can see all the uniform is done the touch up let's just bring the camera in a smidge there you can see So he's done his leather boots, his spats, and uh, I said painted his old holster and belt before. So just painted his shirt as well off cam. 
it's just sort of a khaki greeny colour. So we're going to move on to the flesh tone. So I'm going to go a bit different for this. So as you can see with my palette, I've laid out the colours what I'm going to potentially need. So we'll have a quick run through of what we've got. So Panzer Aces Yellow Rust. Okay, so we're going to shy away from the standard sort of flesh sets that you get. So Yellow Rust is going to be one. The one next to it is an orange colour. This is just the again colour extra opaque orange but uh, again a orange colour would do for that we've then got stencil which is an off-white colour next to that and then last but not least on that side of the palette we've got a German camo beige which is obviously sort of a greeny colour all right and then this side we've got again one of the game colour um, colours which is the violet we've got just a flat blue and just matte black all right, so they're the main colours I've got on the palette. I'm also going to keep the glaze medium handy and also I've got a little drop of bottle of water here. But the palette's quite wet, so hopefully we're not going to need that. So, again, initial sort of flesh base is what we're going for. And to be honest with you, the rust colour as is is not a bad colour. So, okay, I'm keeping it thin, a little bit on there, and then I'm going to add just a, a tiny drop of blue, just to desaturate it too much, it'll probably take it a bit far, but we'll bring that back, okay, blue's strong, so you don't need a lot of it, All right, this is similar to what I did with the, um, the German figure video, mm -hmm. Let's brush over a very transparent sort of base coat over his face. Into his hairline, into his ears. Chin. Just to keep this stable, let's just chuck it in there. We'll chuck him in the holder so we can. Uh, Keep in one count. That's better. So, controlled strokes. trick is we're keeping the paint thin on the palette as well it won't build up fast it won't get that really thick looking paint it's easier to sort of control I suppose um, get that sort of blotchy appearance of the skin if, if it, the paint's too thick So the glaze medium as well just because it is thinner we'll just keep keep the pigment together that'll paint up his hands as well
Okay. So what we'll do is do the back of his neck. Any bits that I can't, uh, I can't see why I'm doing it on cam. We'll come back and start adding some highlights. So the base coat stripe, what I've just done is just did a bit of a play off cam with the orange and the base coat and a bit of glaze medium. Try and keep the palette in for you. Okay, which just put, gives you this sort of nice warm flesh colour, I suppose you could call it. It's really thin, like I said, the glaze medium just makes it so it's like tinted water, which makes it easy to control. So, what I've done is just put a bit on his, on his hands down the bottom, or the bottom, should I say, just here, and then, and then just feathered it in. And we'll just turn that onto the cam. So, again, it just gives a bit of life to the figure. And that's sometimes a problem with um, small figures and, and any figure. You can, you know, if we do it up near the temples, round his ears, you know where blood flow would be. Right round under his cheekbones as well, so we can put that on camera for you. Let's try that. So just so you're just going to put a bit of colour just. Where it naturally be, you know, inside of his nose, his nose as well, because um, obviously the the. Let's try and keep this. Let's try and keep him on cam. So, so up, up near his hairline, where the natural shadow would be. I just want to put some around there. I'll actually put some under his eyes as well, down the bridge of his nose, under his chin. Again, you're going to go over this, so it's not like if you make a mess of it, you can't tidy it up. So let's quickly run through where I'm at at the minute. Okay, so we've got the um, initial highlights on. So we're just starting to bring out the detail in his face. Also, what I've done. Just to see on this side, as you can see, there's sort of the, the bluey grey colour. So we've just started to block in a bit of colour on his beard and also around the back of his head where his head shaved. As he's struggling to focus. Okay. And also, as you can see on his cheeks, I've added a little bit of colour now. All that was, was mixing the orange. Um, pull out a bit. Okay. The orange with a little bit of purple, so we've kind of got this colour. Uh, it's more orange than purple, obviously, but I'm trying to make everybody see it. We're zooming in and out. But sort of this this sort of colour, which is a nice shadow colour as well. So you can just start to might be better there, look. just sort of blocking around the side of his nose, um, a little bit under the eyes, under the chin. Or under the bottom lip, okay, and then put a bit of colour back round sort of the cheek area again. Okay, so it's definitely starting to come to life. So, what I'm going to do is leave this to dry because, like I've said on previous put on the back, black, black background. Um, videos with acrylics is they do tend to die off they do tend to when they're really dry just fade back so probably gonna have to just touch in and and bring out back these highlights they're gonna go and um, sink back loads and the course of the next sort of 24 hours after that then we can we can go back in finish off this side of the face with the shadows that I started on that side all right we'll show you that have to do that and then obviously we're going to paint his hair in as well
and then generally it should be um, it should be pretty much complete. Yeah, not looking too bad. So okay, we'll see. You, I'll see you when the paint's dry. I'd like to say the paint's fully gone off, and we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll get it finished off. We'll get his face finished off. So what I'm going to do is add a bit of um, sort of the stubble, which for this I'm just going to use a real light blue grey, really really thin. Again, I've thinned it with the um, glaze medium, which will just keep it all together. So again, just like sort of dots and dashes, if you want to call it that. see what it does if you take your time and build it up you'll get sort of that five o'clock shadow effect it's also good if somebody's got sort of really short shaped hair as well so again if you go up into the hairline So that gives that a nice effect. So as you can see, it's now got a bit of colour. I've already done that side, so as you can see, is five o'clock shadows there as well. So next up, I'm going to paint his hair. Do any final touch-ups, uh, and touch up his badges and stuff, and this figure's done. So yeah, it just adds a bit of another dimension when you're painting your figures, just add a bit of colour to them, they don't look so washed out, look a bit more alive.
So last job on the figure is to dirty him up a bit, make, make him look like he's actually uh, been in the field. So find these weathering pencils from AK are ideal for this sort of job. Um, sepia is a fantastic colour and also obviously if you've got the, the dirt and mark set as well, there's, there's the earth brown and, and streaking dirt and some other colours in there that work as well. So mainly going to be using the sepia one. So what I normally do is just use a paintbrush. in the end okay get some on your brush and then just you know unload a little bit as you like you normally do with acrylics and then just put it on where you want it okay so where is likely to be you know Jumping on and off the tank, sitting down, you know, bottom of his trousers, he's going to cop it. Don't worry if it looks messy at the minute, this stuff is brilliant for cleaning and blending. So you can put it on pretty heavy and then obviously boots and spats for a nice coat. Just do the front. This will just take a little bit to dry off. So once the water's evaporated and it's dry, then you will. Uh, then basically, what you do is just take a, a damp brush, same one I've just been using, just unload it so it's just barely got any moisture in it, and then just manipulate it like you would with a wash or a um, sort of oil wash any of the enamel or oil wash is the same sort of principle so you can just move it around and if you don't like it you just wash it off so really really versatile product so as you can see this knee is starting to dry now so what you can do is if you just take that say your damp brush just keep cleaning it and loading it and just reactivate the uh, pigment you've put on okay As you can see, you're just going to get some nice staining there on his knees where he's been kneeling, or you know, and this stuff really doesn't take long to, to sort of evaporate the water to evaporate out of it. So, and what it's also good for as well is just making a bit of a filter. So as you can see, it's just starting to uh, obviously have a bit of wear and tear on his trousers. So get the general idea what you can do with this. Obviously, you can layer the colours up, but just just um, just bear in mind that you do reactivate these unless you seal them in. So they're not kind of permanent. The, the uh, as soon as you touch them with water, they will come off. So if you are gonna sort of layer over the top, just bear that in mind. You know they are gonna blend and reactivate on one another. So but yeah, we'll uh, 
just finish doing these little bits and then I'm going to call him finished. So thank you all for watching and sticking with this one. I hope you might have learned something or picked something up or, uh, or perhaps not. But anyway, we'll see you in the next one, which is going to be the final base for the uh, Sherman and the figures. So see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.